In this tutorial, I'm going to be teaching you how to increase or decrease the crotch length of your pants. You'll need a few things before we get started. So one will be the pattern piece that you are going to be modifying. You'll need a clear drafting ruler. This one is divided in increments of an eighth and along the edge I can see increments of 1 16. You'll need some scrap paper. You'll need a metal ruler for cutting. You'll need some sort of tape. I like using masking tape. Normally I use the cream colored one, but I've run out so I'm using painter's tape instead but any sort of tape that you can draw over is great. You'll need a mechanical pencil, an eraser, some sort of cutting tool. I like exacto knives but you can use a pair of scissors as well and you'll also need a curved ruler. You'll also need to have a few measurements ready in order to modify your pattern. The first being the pattern crotch length. Now this measurement is taken inside of the seam allowance of your pattern. If your pattern doesn't indicate what the crotch length is, I'll show you in this video how you can take this measurement. The second will be your personal crotch length. Now, if you're unsure of how to take this measurement, I have a video on how to take measurements that will demonstrate how to do this. And the third measurement that we're going to need is the difference between these two measurements. So if the crotch length of your pattern is greater than your personal crotch length measurement, you'll be decreasing the crotch length of your pattern by this difference. If the crotch length of your pattern is less than your personal crotch length, you'll be increasing the length of your pattern by this difference. Most often times we would be increasing or decreasing the crotch length on the back pattern piece and this is because this area tends to be more curvaceous than the front, though this isn't always the case. You know your body best so if you need to make changes to both front and back areas you can do so but you'll want to take individual measurements of your front and back crotch lengths and apply the differences using this same technique. As mentioned earlier, we'll need to know our pattern crotch length measurement. Now, even if your pattern states the crotch length, I still think it's always best to take the measurement yourself in order to avoid any unnecessary mistakes. To take this measurement, we'll need to first subtract the seam allowance from the outer edges of both the front and back pattern pieces. In this case, I know the seam allowance on this pattern is a half inch, so walking my half inch mark on the ruler along the pattern's edge, I'll draw straight lines that will form the inner curve of the pattern. It's also really important to stand directly over your pattern piece as you're working on it since your perspective could be off if you're standing back and away from it. You'll also want to subtract the seam allowance from areas that connect to the crotch length, such as the inseam and the waist area, in order to get an accurate measurement. Next, I'll measure my newly created pattern edge by walking my ruler along this line. On the more curved portions of the crotch, I'm measuring in quarter inch increments and writing these measurements on my pattern so I don't lose track. You'll do this for the entire crotch length on both the front and back pattern pieces in order to get your total crotch length of your pattern. Now that we have all of our measurements, we'll start by applying them to a crotch increase. In this example, we'll say that the crotch length of my pattern is 26 inches and that my personal crotch length is 27 inches. So we'll apply the difference of one inch to increase the length of the crotch on this pattern. To do this, we'll start by locating the hip notch on our pattern. If your pattern doesn't have a hip notch or you're having trouble locating it, on a pair of high-waisted pants, it's normally a third of the distance from the crotch to waist measured up from the crotch line along that side seam area and about halfway up on a pair of low-rise pants. 
Once we've located our hip notch, we'll align our ruler with the grain line, making sure it's square and at a 90 degree angle with our hip notch. And we'll draw a line straight across the hip. If you prefer, you can also use an L ruler to do this. In a moment, we're going to be cutting along this hip line, stopping just short of the side seam. But before we do that, we're going to need our scrap pieces of paper. I'm going to tape these two pieces of paper together, ensuring that they're wider than the hip line of my pattern. Next, we'll take our ruler and draw a straight vertical line that will act as our grain line. We'll then align our ruler to this grain line, and at a 90 degree angle, we'll draw a horizontal line that will act as our hip line. Just above and parallel to our hip line, we'll draw another line straight across using our crotch length increase measurement as the distance between these two lines. In this case, I'll be increasing the length by one inch, so this line is drawn one inch above the hip line. We'll set this aside for now and we'll start working on our pattern. Using a metal ruler, I'm going to align it with the hip line I created on the pattern. Taking my X-Acto knife, I'm going to leave the side seam area slightly attached when cutting by starting to cut just inside of the pattern line. Now we'll take the paper with our increase measurements and lay it underneath the pattern, aligning our grain lines and hip lines. Once it's aligned perfectly, we'll tape it down at the hip line. Placing our finger or a pin at the end of our slash line at the side seam, we'll begin sliding the top portion up until the inner pattern line without the seam allowance meets our increase marking. Once we've done this, we can tape it down. You'll also want to reinforce the slash line edge at the side seam by taping it down. Next, we'll need to connect our pattern lines using a curved ruler. We'll align the ruler at the curve and adjust it until it meets smoothly with the upper portion of the pattern. This should be a soft curve, and once drawn, it should look like a smooth transition between the two lines. Now we'll need to redraw our seam allowance around the extended area of our pattern. To avoid confusion, I recommend either erasing the old pattern line or crossing it out before drawing in your new seam allowance. Starting at the bottom edge at our hip line, I'm aligning my half inch mark with the pattern line and redrawing the seam allowance here. So I'm walking my half inch mark all along that line until it meets back up with the existing seam allowance. I'm just erasing the old pattern line here so you can see the new seam allowance of our extended back crotch length. Your next step would be to cut away the excess on the outside of your seam allowance and further secure the pattern piece with tape if necessary. I won't be doing this in this video because I'll be using the same pattern to show you how to decrease the crotch length. 
Next, we'll move on to how to decrease the crotch length. For this example, we'll say the crotch length of the pattern is 26 inches and my personal crotch length is 25.5 inches with a difference of half an inch. Using the same technique of slash and spread, we'll find our hip notch, draw a line straight across, making sure it's square with our grain line and cut this hip line, leaving it slightly attached at the side seam. Next, we'll take our ruler and on our pattern, we'll use the difference measurement to create a parallel line above our hip line. In this case, I'm using the example of a half inch. Placing your finger, a pin, or a piece of tape at the end of your slash line at the side seam, we'll begin sliding our bottom piece up until our inner pattern line meets our decrease marking. Once they meet, we'll tape them down. Next, we'll need to connect our pattern lines using a curved ruler. We'll align the ruler at the curve and adjust it until it meets smoothly with the upper portion. This again should look like a soft curve and once drawn, it should look like a smooth transition between the two. Before we redraw our seam allowance, I'm going to erase this line so that I'm not confused by it. If you don't have a scrap piece of paper underneath your pattern, place one underneath so that you can redraw the new seam allowance. Aligning your ruler with the bottom edge of your pattern, redraw the seam allowance by walking your ruler along the inner edge of your pattern until it merges with the existing seam allowance. Lastly, you'll want to cut away any excess area outside of your pattern and tape it further if necessary. This marks the end of the tutorial. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it helpful. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. And if there are any topics related to pattern modifications or pattern drafting that you want explained, let me know and I'll do my best to create a video for them.